Okay, uh, part four is the zero product property. The steps that you need to take for these are to set equal to zero and then factor. So if we look at number 35, we notice that it's not set equal to zero. So we need to bring the 50x over. It's plus over here, so it's going to be minus over here. So once we set equal to zero, we're going to look at the highest degree, which in this case is 3. So we are looking for three solutions. Our first thing that we want to do when we factor is take out a GCF. Well, 18 and 50, I have a GCF of 2. And then they both have an x, so 2x. So we end up with 9x squared minus 25. Well, right away, I know one of my solutions is zero. That is because my GCF involved a variable. I need two more, which will come from this guy, which we can go ahead and factor because nine is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square, and I have a minus sign. So three X minus five, three X plus five equals zero. So I end up with 3x minus 5 equals 0 and 3x plus 5 equals 0. So 3x equals 5, so x equals 5 thirds, while this one will be its opposite. So I end up with plus and minus 5 thirds. 36. Degree of, well, we already said equal to zero. We have a degree of four, so we're looking for four solutions. Let's take out a GCF of four because four, 40, and 44, four goes into all of those. So I end up with x squared plus 10x, sorry, that's x to the fourth, minus 11. Since my GCF was just a number with no variable attached to it, one of my solutions is not zero, okay? Let's go ahead and factor this. What needs to be in my F spot to get that X to the fourth? Well, we need an X squared. X squared times X squared will give me that X four. Then we just treat it just like an X factoring problem. So we end up with 11 and negative 1. And then let's take this further. Because that's a difference of squares. So right away, I see a positive 1, a negative 1, and then let's solve this guy over here. X squared equals negative 11. We square root it. So X equals plus or minus to get the two other answers. That's crucial that you have the plus or minus. Since 11 was a negative number, we need to bring out an I rad 11. One, two, three, four answers. Let's look at 37. 37, set equal to zero. We have a cube, we have a minus sign. So this is a difference of cubes. Where 27 is a perfect cube of three. X cubed is a perfect cube of X. And 64 is a perfect cube of 4. So it's A minus B. Then we square our A. We multiply our A and B. And then we square our 16. We are looking for three solutions. 
I know this one's going to give me 4 thirds. I add 4, I divide by 3, so that's one of my answers. The other guy, we're going to have to do the quadratic formula. This is not factorable. So here's my A, here's my B, here's my C. So negative 12 plus or minus 144 minus 4 times 9 times 16 all over 18. Guys, help me out real quick. Negative 12 plus or minus. What do I get here? Say what? 576. Thank you guys. All over 18. Help me out again. 144 minus 576. Say what? Negative 432. Is there a perfect square that goes into 432? And we're back. 144 and 3. Sorry for that little delay. So we end up with 12 red 3. Well, that 12 is also going to have a I on it because the 432 was negative. Twelve, twelve, and eighteen are all divisible by six. There is our final answer in addition to four thirds. I'm going to tell you right now whenever you have to do difference of cubes or sum of cubes, this trinomial is always going to end up with an I, and it's also going to have to be quadratic formula out to get your roots. Next one. I have a degree of 3 set equal to 0. I'm good to go. I'm looking for three solutions. I have one, two, three, four terms. Our method of choice is factored by grouping. First parentheses has a GCF of X. squared. <laughs> the next one has a GCF of 4. A negative 4 since we had to bring it out. Good news is our parentheses match now. This guy right here can go further since it's a difference of squares. That's going to give me an answer of 2, that's going to give me an answer of negative 2, and that's going to give me an answer of negative 6. Because remember, we're going to be setting these equal to 0, we're going to have to do the inverse. So x equals plus or minus 2 and 6. <coughs> 39, this is an obnoxious one, we are looking for 6 solutions. Once again, we have one, two, three, four terms. Method of choice, factor by grouping. First guy has a GCF of x to the fourth. Next one has a GCF of negative nine. So 36 divided by 9, negative 4. Parentheses match. That is our ultimate goal. This can be gone further. It's also a difference of squares because my exponent is an even number. And I have a minus sign. So I have x squared minus 3, x squared plus 3. This can also be gone go further. x minus 2, x plus 2.
This is going to give me a positive 2. That's going to give me a negative 2. So plus or minus. Then these two problems right here can be solved by using the square root method. So x equals plus or minus rad 3. And this one is going to be plus or minus i rad 3 since the 3 was negative. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, six solutions. Okay, let's look at inequalities. I got four minutes. I need to rock this out. Forty, number forty. Rate of factor like normal. So we have six and negative five. So I end up with negative 6 and 1. <coughs> oh, heck no. <coughs> I lied. <laughs> negative 2 and <laughs> negative 3. Nothing better than live TV here, guys. Okay. <laughs> so we have roots of 2 and 3. I have a closed circle. And now think about this. Where is my parabola above the line? Well, this is my parabola right here. When is my graph above it? Well, it's above from here and beyond. And from here and beyond. Next one is a difference of squares. So we have answers of 9 and negative 9. Open circle. Once again, let's think about our graph. It is greater than 0. We're looking for greater, so when is it above here and here? here. If this was less than, it would be in between. Next one, let's go ahead and take out a GCF of 3x. So we end up with x squared minus 16. Then we end up with x minus 4, x plus 4. So we have answers of 0, 4, and negative 4. We're using open circles. Let's remember the end behavior guy. For an odd, it starts negative and then alternates back and forth. We are looking for less than, so we're looking for the negatives. Next one uh, is a sum of cubes. 64 is a perfect cubed of 4x. 343 is a perfect cubed of 7. And I end up with... 16x squared plus 28x plus 49 less than or equal to 0. Now here's the story. We know this is negative 7 fourths. Remember me telling you earlier that this trinomial is always going to give you an imaginary number. Okay? That imaginary number is never going to cross the x-axis. So I can care less about that guy. It's not going to affect my inequality. I got 10 seconds. Oh no. Okay. Close circle. And it's going to go to the left since it was negative. 